Hi friends, family, folks. Welcome to today's episode of Sacred Earth Essentials Plants of the Day. So Sacred Earth Essentials is the umbrella mother company that I created um, before my son was born. Uh, I did not register it as an LLC in, until 2017. And underneath of Sacred Earth Essentials, you will find my the daughter companies that I've just begun of Vermont Herb Shop, Higher Love Vermont, and North Country Counseling PLLC, which is a professionally licensed counseling business. Um, and so Sacred Earth Essentials is a place, as I've said in some of my previous videos, where I, as a practitioner and an herbalist and an artist and an educator, um, among many other trades, uh, would like to be able to present the experiences and potentially wisdom that I've gleaned along the way um, to the rest of you. So again, thanks for being here. And remember here, we believe that the earth is worthy of respect and reverence, and so are you. And so part of the mission here is to bring back that awareness for ourselves and for others through multiple healing modalities, because we're each different and what works for me may not work for you. Um, but I have done a lot of seeking over the years to find out what the different healing modalities and the history of these healing modalities are. And so this channel is a way for me to present my experience to you, um, to maybe uh, entertain, enlighten, and spark your desire to research on your own. So today's plants of the day, in honor of International Women's Day, I've chosen to discuss one of my all-time favorite flowers in the universe, um, the rose, Rosa Damascena, or the Damask Rose is one variety. Um, another one of my, and that is, the, that is the variety of rose that when you smell it, it just, you're in totally intoxicated um, by that scent. It puts its love spell on you um, through your olfactory senses, um, as well as potentially if you're ingesting it through your organoleptic, your taste senses, um, as well as how it really just envelopes, you know, your nerves and, and in some belief systems, your etheric body as well. Um, for me, Rose, is a very soothing, very calming, uh, very, very therapeutic scent for me personally. Now, with the way that our brains work, those of you who do not like rose may have had a negative experience with it in the past and that scent may trigger those memories for you. Um, but for me, um, I love the smell of rose. I, I have this rose water here. And this is by Heritage Store, a legacy for life. And the, this rose water is something that, you know, I'm not, I'm not a beauty um, expert. I'm not a model in any way, um, in case you haven't noticed. And I also don't have a makeup channel, but sometimes, you know, in the day, I might, it tastes so good. You can put it in food. You know, if I need a little boost, got some frizzies in my, my hair, you know, just kind of bless yourself with it right? And you can use it to bless others as well, if that's your thing. I just I love the scent. I, I really feel like it's uplifting. Um, and the rose has a very rich and esoteric history, both in culinary, medicinal, and spiritual uses. It's said to originate in the Asian region, in Asia. Um, and it has a very, very rich, rich culture, a rich history in Turkish culture as well. Um, I know that at one of the herb, it was the New England Women's Herbal Conference, one of the sessions, the workshops that I attended was about the distillation of essential oil. And it, you know, takes thousands and thousands of pounds of plant material, raw, you know, plant material to extract the amounts of small essential oils that you know you may get in a bottle that may have you know been added to different products that you use and so you know it, it carries more than just the essence of the plant in it and in in turkey you know and in those those regions where the rose originated there are also ancient practices 
of hand distilling, hand picking these roses and distilling these um, phenomenally high quality oils. And if you believe in that plants have spirits and essences, like you're not only getting those scientifically proven molecules in the plant, um, but you're also getting the spiritual essence of that plant, the personality of that plant, everything that that plant has seen, heard, or known in its, its existence, in its DNA structure. And when you're ingesting plants, um, or anything really, you're ingesting that, that genetic structure as well, um, in my opinion. And so rose as, is so popular. I mentioned the rose damask. I believe um, I also mentioned Rosa Rugosa, like a wild rose, which also comes in um, red, white, and pink, and is the closest thing that we would use to. So I have these, I picked those in my garden here. I have, um, and I use those therapeutically as well. And the reason that so far I've grown the Rosa Rugosa, the Japanese rose here in Vermont, is because the varieties that I, the plants, specific plants that I've purchased come from a local place called Elmore Roots. And he grows some incredibly hardy plants that do really well up here in the Vermont climate. Um, so when I'm making herbal products and I want to incorporate rose in those products, I'm going to use like a, a rosa essential oil. I use I use rose water in my facial creams, um, as well as like I showed you before for my own little personal splash. And then I also use, excuse me, I need a sip of water. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah these kind of roses. So these are rosebuds from Mountain Rose Herb and none of these products that I'm sharing with you, I'm being paid or encouraged to promote. I'm just sharing with you what I have, um, which is a really cool lesson and, and something that I've learned um, through herbalism and through my herbal teachers is about using what you have, um, whether it be knowledge, skills, or an actual plant product um, and I was recently watching Rosemary Gladstar give an herbal workshop at the online Florida Herbal Symposium <clears throat> which I recommend you check out if you're interested for next year and one of the things that she had mentioned was that using the plants that she had available to her and I know that that's something I've learned from her over the years as well is about you know, using what's available to you, using what you know, using what you're familiar with until you learn more and, you know, advance on to having those other tools, those other plants, those other supports in your system, in your toolkit to use. And so I have these roses here and they're just gorgeous. And you smell those and it goes right up, right up into your brain, you know, like anything else that you would put up your nose. And so we want to think about putting good things up our nose, um, things that are going to enrich our lives, not things that are going to cause more detriment and more, more pain over the long haul. So as you learn about herbalism and me, um, you're gonna learn a lot of interesting things. And I always, always, always encourage you to continue to do your own research as I speak from my experience specifically on this channel um, with the purpose of entertaining and educating. So these are a little bit older than I care to admit. Um, I use this particular bag for my tea and I like to mix this Tulsi um, with or mix these roses with Tulsi, for example. I also like to mix roses with nettle, and both of which um, are very nourishing plants, I believe, for the spirit, for the soul, for the heart, as well as protective plants. Um, and you know, people think about roses having thorns as being a bad thing at times, but I've learned over the course of my 36 years that occasionally having thorns in the right places at the right time is an exceptional quality, an essential quality to have in life. Um, and on that note, 
I'm going to mention also that it, if you receive any types of messages claiming to be me, um, unless it comes from Stephanie, S-T-E-F as in Frank, A-N-I-E at sacredearthessentials.com um, or if it comes directly from this YouTube channel, it, then it's not from me. I have been harassed extensively ever since I opened up my Instagram profile to being a professional account and ever since I began posting videos on YouTube. Um, and so it's actually been very frightening for me. I don't typically talk to strangers online. And unfortunately for myself, I decided that that was, you know, something I was willing to explore. And in the process learned that there are still an extensive amount of potential predators online. And I've also learned throughout the YouTube community that there are other YouTubers who are currently also being harassed and scammed. And so I just wanted to give that public service announcement um, in light of the idea of thorns and nettles of protecting oneself and protecting one's energy, protecting one's love um, that one has to offer. And so finding that balance between being able to give away your sweetness and your beauty um, for the healing and, and just because that's who you are and what you love to do, um, you know, balanced with having that thornier side of yourself um, to keep yourself and your loved ones safe. So again, friends, I'm not reaching out and contacting people unless I'm adding you on my Instagram account, sacred underscore earth underscore essentials. Um, you can also find me at Higher Love Vermont. Vermont Herb Shop and North Country Counseling, um, but I'm not going to be asking for things or soliciting services. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is easily found on my websites and this YouTube channel. So be like the rose ladies, beautiful and recognize your own worth and protect it. And that goes for you um, who identify as being men, um, or anyone else within the LGBTQ plus community. You know, whoever you are and whatever gender you identify as, you are beautiful and you are sacred and you are worthy of the love and respect and reverence of others and especially and first and foremost, your own. Um, there's an, a relationship between the two. We're all connected and as you improve one area of your life, you'll see other areas um, improve as well. So I know it, it may seem a little odd sitting here like this with these roses in my hand, um, but they just really feel so beautiful. And even although I've had these ones for um, a while now, they've still retained their, their bright color, many of them, and they work wonderful to use for an aroma thera aroma therapeutic pillow in the evening i again put these in my tea i have a friend who makes the most delicious baklava i've ever had in my life and she uses um the, the edible grade rose water in her baklava recipe um, rose is also very very nourishing to the skin um, it's an excellent thing to put in facial creams and oils um, any type of bath product. I also have um, a deodorant here, Schmidt's Rose and Vanilla um, deodorant, you know, so you can really put rose in a lot of things. I've got this um, Rosies on Broadway chapstick here. It's a, actually a chocolate CBD lip balm, um, but it feels beautiful. I'm on my lips here. Um, so again, Rose is just so versatile. It has such a rich history and I really love it so very much. And so I know I've talked mostly so far about my relationship with the Rose, how it feels to me, how it can be used aromatherapeutically and that it is has the thousands of years of, of history um, used in culture, it has have many other plants, which I'm learning about extensively in the current Gangier training program that I'm doing. And I can't wait to share some really fun, fascinating and phenomenal facts um, about cannabis with you in further videos. Um, so as for the rose, I'm gonna leave you here with some information from one of my favorite go-to books that I've mentioned to you before, the Encyclopedia of Essential Oils. Um, and also, you know, not only do we use the petals of rose for our teas, for oils, for rose water, 
Um, but we also, I mean, I've also eat raw rose petals here. I'm not gonna shove the whole bud in my mouth right this second, but I mean, just feeling it on your tongue, like talk about color therapy and nature therapy at its finest. Mm. Mm. And you can just leave it there. And I know that may look odd to some of you who aren't familiar with the art and science of herbalism, but this is how we expose one another. And this is what has been a huge gift to me and a gift that I have been neglecting and have to admit that and that I have not been sharing it with the world um, for reasons that we won't get into today. But here I am sharing as best I can, extending my heart and my love to the universe in hopes that this resonates and soothes at least one soul out there. So, rosaceae. It also is often called the summer damask rose, the Bulgarian rose, the Turkish rose, Anatolian rose oil comes from that, the auto of rose oil, and the attar of rose oil are the most popular oils that you're going to come across. If you've ever bought rose essential oil before, you'll also know that it's one of the most expensive oils. Um, one of my favorites. It's very soothing to the heart chakra. Um, I believe in any way, whether romantic love or familiar love, it can be soothing to that those wounds um, as well as opening at the same time, which as any of you who've gone through any type of heartbreak know and heart chakra healing know that in order to heal it, you have to feel it. Um, and in order to heal it and feel it, you have to open it. So the rose is one of those plants that really helps to open and soothe your heart chakra and your emotional body in a way that is not only nourishing, but again, protective um, with that quality of the thorn. So it is believed that it's a native of Asia and it's cultivated now mostly in Bulgaria, Turkey, and France. Um, similar types uh, to the Damask Rose are also grown in China, India, and Russia. Um, and again, this is different than the type of rose that you would get for a gift, for example, in a bouquet. Um, there's a large amount of industrial roses that are produced for floral bouquets in the South American region. And I also want to say that it's important to try as often as possible to buy organic when you can, because you don't want those chemicals in your body, whether you're ingesting them or putting them on your skin. Um, however, finding organic products is still somewhat of a challenge depending on who you are and where you live. And then there's the question of cost and whether or not you're willing to spend extra money for organic or local products. Um, which as you get more and more into your own personal health journey, your spiritual journey, spiritual growth journey, um, and your you know, healing, your health and wellness journey, you'll begin to value more and more organic and be willing to invest in yourself um, with money, my own natural energy yield. So you'll be willing to take your energy yield and invest it in yourself to increase your energy and your vibrancy in life um, value. So a couple of the traditions of the Damask Rose include that on the account of its fragrance, it belongs to the cephalix, but the next valuable virtue of it that it possesses consists in its cathartic quality. Oil of roses is used by itself to cool hot inflammations or swellings and to bind and stay fluxes of humors to sores. So again, it can help with that soothing effect both on an emotional level, as well as literally soothing inflammation on the physical level. I wanted to also add here, one of the um, nutritious benefits of the rose is also found in its hips. The rose hips, um, the, the ball that is left after the rose loses its flowers is super rich in vitamin C. Um, if you've ever tried it before in like a rose hip jam, it's absolutely delicious. Um, and again, nutritious, and what, who of us don't like to combine those two? I mean, it's the same with work and the same with our relationships. Like we, it is conducive to our enjoyment and our health when we try to align 
what we do, the actions that we take um, with our innermost truth and with our, our highest self, you know, with the intentions of living a healthy and happy life and then being able to help others live healthy and happy lives um, from, from our place of peace and power and joy and love. It's a process though, and in the midst of that process, there's going to be moments that are more difficult than others where you're challenging um, yourself and, and ways that you didn't uh, know that you were going to have to challenge yourself. And it is true um, that those challenges, when you push through them and not give up, that those challenges make you stronger. Um, and they, and for me, at least, I believe, make me a better person in the end. So if you're in the need for some really hardcore motivation, I suggest checking out the Carl Nile channel. Um, he's done a really excellent job of motivating me over the past few weeks. So thank you, Carl Nile, and all of those of you who have listened to me and held space for me along the path, um, which I think is really important for me to mention on this channel and as a health practitioner and an herbalist is that like I'll, those of you who know me know this but some of you watching this don't really know me yet and I'm not perfect don't claim to be perfect and if anything I'm more willing than um, I probably should be to wear my heart on my sleeve and to express this authenticity here on this channel because I know that it's been through others authenticity and sharing that I have um, had the courage and the space to rise up myself and to heal. Um, so that is a, that's a, a part of my story is that I know about different healing modalities in different realms because of my struggle and because of, of my um, sometimes self-imposed, you know, suffering. And I, as you may know, if you've watched earlier episodes, I got on this path to learn about the causes of suffering and how to alleviate it. And so the rose is one of my favorite methods for alleviating suffering in the heart realm. Um, and again, that goes to inflammation and nerves and increasing your, your vitamin C, which is also very good for me, given um, that, I, that I have vitiligo. And one of the best things that I can do for myself is to make sure that I am eating fresh fruits and vegetables, and that I'm getting a very holistic diet um, in, because nutritional healing, I think, is one of the foundational pieces, if not the most foundational piece of, um, to our, to living a, a healthy life, um, unless you wanted to put your spiritual health first, which some people would believe that your, your spiritual health is really the foundation, and then everything else builds upon that. So whenever the the oil of the rose is being used, I just wanted to mention what its principal constituents are. And they're mainly citronella, and then there's also geraniol and neural and serapoptin or ser no, I said that wrong, I apologize. Seroptin, um, phenylethanol, and farnesol. Um, and there's other trace constituents that aren't listed here. Um, it's also considered to be a safe product where it's non-toxic, not irritant, and non-sensitizing. So again, like I took this rose water and splashed it all over my face, right? I wouldn't do the same thing with straight up essential oil. You know, I would take a dab maybe. But even then, um, it's really not recommended to put essential oil directly on your skin. You would want to dilute it with a carrier oil. Um, so those are a little bit of facts there about the rose, just a, a really an introduction, a, a welcome from the rose today on International Women's Day, and a invitation to you to work with the rose plant um, whenever you have a chance, whether you are purchasing products that have the rose in it, whether you are willing and interested to buy an actual bag of dried roses and experiment with it in your home kitchen, um, or whether or not you just want to go and buy yourself a rose plant or a bouquet of roses. 
or maybe you have someone nearby that makes baklava with rose oil or you know how to do it yourself. Um, there's a, tons of different ways that you can imbue your life with more of the rose plant and more of the rose spirit. Um, one of the interesting things, oh, speaking of roses, which I'm going to mention this as this is a multidisciplinary channel, um, is rose quartz. So I've got some rose quartz just sitting right here, just a chunk, a raw chunk. Um, and so if you're into crystals here, the ro rose quartz, um, we've got this pink theme going on today, is associated with unconditional love and healing. So I'm extending this rose energy to you all today in unconditional love and healing and as a thank you to all of those women who've gone before and are here now and will be in the future to support each other and to lift each other up and a thank you to all of you men out there who love us women and have supported us along the way um, and to all beings again regardless of type <clears throat> or gender thank you for being here on this planet and thank you for watching my channel and thank you for taking the time to believe that the earth is sacred and so are you. Thank you very much. I'm wishing you the most beautiful day and as always, I got this from the Morgan Presbyterian, not Presbyterian, sorry, Morgan Church in Morgan, Vermont. I used to go to the Barnet Presbyterian Church. Um, but Pastor Mike likes to end his sermons in this phrase, so I want to give credit to him as I say this. But I love it so much that I would like to share it with you here on this channel. I think the message is important and in line with the energies of today. So folks, um, thank you very much. Go and smell the roses and be in peace and a blessing. Bye.